Hi, this is me. I accidentally turned this off. Um, so I have some power of attorney paper. Um, oh shoot, is this a blank tax form? Who was I supposed to fill that out for? Oh my god. Somebody requested this. And I think it's due like today. So I got this paperwork to do today. Um, so I told my boyfriend I was going to look out the window and watch him work. But I feel bad. <laughs> I have stuff to do. People don't look at the home business or self-employed if you're not at home as work. I hate that about this world. Um, thinking about that. Um, so, so signing today. Comfortable closings. Offering $175. Buyer and seller. First only. Scanbacks required. Oh, I've seen this person's name before. Oh my god. Buyer and seller. I was like, oh, is it just a seller for $175? But with scanbacks, like buyer and seller, that's going to be a pain in the buttock. Um, when you did, um, unemployment, if you, I'm looking for, if you're not supposed to turn down work, what if you have, like, 16 appointments all between 3 and 5 p.m. on the same day, or other people want you to do more, like, you cannot, you cannot do it, so it's like, you might as well look at that before you pay your taxes and work your job, like, I mean, not trying to say don't pay your taxes, but you need to look at that before you need the service, because it's impossible to be in more than one place at a time. And you could do all you can in your power to say, I'm not turning the work down. And I could do it at 7 a.m. I could do it at 10 p.m. But you know how much that sucks to work 20-something hours a day. They want you to, like, kill yourself 7 hours a day. Um, and if you don't have children, for a lot of different things, you're not going to get services. Or you're going to get very little. And it's... People that don't have a dependent or children. When I had children, I went to school. I was going to school to be a doctor. I was going to school with an undergraduate degree and two other certificates. And I was married. And we were both supposed, he was supposed to finish school. I was supposed to go back to grad uh, medical school, working and stuff, hustling. And it sucks to be divorced and flee domestic violence. He's the one that messed up, which changed my marital status to single mom, went to a domestic violence shelter where they force you to get on welfare. So I became a welfare mom. I mean, I had a job. Some of these programs, in the way that I get paid as an educated black female, the lowest of the low, you can work. 10, 20, 30 something hours a week and still qualify for certain benefits because you're so poor. There's certain, was it housing or something? Certain programs, a failure of three can make over $91,000 in certain no, communities. It's even higher. Someone was saying something like that in Arkansas where the housing is cheap for certain programs like $90,000, $109,000 for the family of three or family of one sometimes to still qualify for benefits. So don't don't look at people that are getting in some certain kind of benefits or government programs. You try to look at them as not working being poor. No, they happen to find out that you can keep your job and earn a buttload of freaking money and still keep the the stuff. They're gonna look at you like, oh you driving my buy a nice car, blah blah blah. Well when you sign up for a program, you're going to disclose what kind of car you have. You're going to disclose if you have a car payment, if you own it. If you could own multiple properties and be an investment broker or be someone who has rental properties that people are paying you fifteen, sixteen hundred dollars $1,600 a month for a studio and you own like 16 units. You know what I mean? Like, and you could still get certain programs. And I'm saying, I'm not saying that it's easy. They have people on the news, such as such, owned a million dollar house and was on food stamps. Like, what if you bought the house or was given the house from your great great grandpa and it happened to be worth a million dollars and you just you didn't do anything to um, 
get the house, like, or you didn't do anything, like, you didn't pay any money, you, just, you had to pay taxes, and what if you're working, and your partner's working, um, it says my order is about to be, about to ship, about to, I didn't order this thing two something weeks ago, I'm not concerned, I just, it's a household item, it's not a gift, it's a household item that is necessary, um, Anyways, I'm trying to see if I saved a draft. I need to find out who... Is that a W9? I'm so stressed out, guys. I hate not being able to take a day off. I hate when I don't take a day off and I get called to something or I try to say... I'm dealing with, for one thing, PTSD, and it's the holidays, and it's re really scary. I did, uh, I was a little late because I got distracted, almost an hour of a uh, toast-up meeting on Zoom this morning, and I just feel like, um, yeah, this is due. All right, let me, let me do a... Return or response. Let's get rid of my line and let's save it as a draft. Can I just save it? Um, let's just click it off and see if it saves it. But I'm so overwhelmed. It's like you feel like you are not allowed to care for your health and. If I work a lot, like a lot, like one job after another, you earn little tricklings of money and then you don't spend money, but then the price of living, even low income places are off the charts. Literally, you could pay for a $400,000 house with an HOA and the taxes for less than the places that are for low income individuals, like slum places, not even modernized not well maintained or kept no parking no yard no nothing like broken appliance you know what i'm saying just the cheapest of the cheapest no pest control no barely garbage pickup like just insufficient so i watched the boiler room let's let's do a little bit of uh, um so i just i did save that as a draft Let's do a little bit of a, I don't think this lady left a message or, let's do a little bit of a review and then I'm going to see if I can say, I'm having like my heart beating fast just thinking about being too busy. This isn't regular. So there's a website. Let me, let me go back to this first. Bunker basics preparation is everything. I don't know. If, I don't. I'm no. I just Google search prepper movies. So I don't know who these people are. You do have some pictures of some stuff for sale. Is that an oxygen tank? What is it? A rocket stuff. I don't know what that is. All right. So they have this top ten list. And this was for 2020 on um, Watch Under Quarantine, written by Bunker Bob. Again, I don't know who these people are. This is, as far as I remember, the first time I watched this. We didn't get to prep at home. We had to work and work and work and work. Um, we didn't get to prep at home. Like, we didn't get, or prep at home. We didn't get to shelter in place. Last year, like the rest of a lot of the world, we had to go out. And it sucked. Because I had to go state to state. And because I had so many jobs... So I was on unemployment for, or I was trying to be eligible for unemployment and they said don't keep applying for jobs if you have a job and don't turn down jobs. So I literally during the midst of COVID had to travel all over this state through another state up to another state for the U.S. Census. You talk to people outside ringing their doorbells. They're not coming to the door with a mask. You're a sitting duck out there. There's no public bathrooms. The bathrooms were closed at the gas stations. The, the restaurants were closed. 
You said, I don't care. I'll go to McDonald's and buy a water if I have to, buy a salad if I have to. I didn't stop selling salads for that matter. So there's no food for me. The restaurants had drive through only. We ended up one time, I had to use the bathroom so bad, I had to go into the um, mall, which was packed. And I was like, when we were driving from place to place to place. So imagine driving like three something hours to get to we are outdoor. You're not at a workplace. You don't have an office. You don't have a uh, check-in place where they say, "Oh, come and get your pick up something," or be able to use this office to organize your paperwork, use the bathroom, and get warm or whatever. It's outside. Sometimes I was outside in the dark in cornfields and chicken farms. You go in a place. I said, "I'm gonna buy some food." I, all the restaurants weren't serving. They had their chairs all taped up. They have restrooms. Can I use the restroom now? They're closed. Like, oh, there's no rest areas. There's no gas station. And the one gas station used to have restroom. Um, so I would type in a certain gas station that usually always has a restroom. I went there recently while I was doing notary work, and the woman's bathroom was under construction. What a nightmare. I had to go to the grocery store. Just like the first time when I went in the door, I just asked them, I hate this feeling. It seems there's no, like, even parks and stuff, even around here, they took out their porta potties during COVID. Like, they literally removed them from the property. And it's like if people were used to having, used to bathroom, what are they going to do? Go on the ground? Like, that stuff, that COVID 19 is detectable in urine and feces. Like, I don't know. That just, I feel like it's disinfected or something. It'd be better. I don't know. Um, uh, so, I know truck drivers had to figure out anyone that works, any delivery, any traveling people. That's just a nightmare. You feel like you're in a wet on yourself. And it's, it's hard to you because you know you're wearing a mask and you're going in to buy food. But for whatever reason, you're not allowed to use a restroom whatsoever. It seems so inhumane and... The homeless population was it in Portland. They said something about putting up porta potties, or I don't know if they had. Like, oh, we just decided we're going to put up a couple porta potties, or I don't even know if they put up the porta potties, but they're like, we're going to for the homeless, we're going to put up some hand washing stations. I'm like, oh, they pat themselves on the back. Good job, though, but they should be treated like humans. Every homeless person is not starved to death, and they have not run out of water. They probably worked, a lot of them served for this country, freaking use some tax money. Because those same people that are panhandling and getting any kind of disability or some, a lot of homeless people actually have jobs too, like regular, legit tax paying jobs. You're paying taxes, you're going into stores, you're paying for stuff. You're paying your cell phone, how much money taxes are on that for whatever company, if it's local or whatever. Those people are paying property tax. So what the point is, you're you're going into the gas station, you're going to a store, you're going to a restaurant, and you're paying taxes. You're buying gas, you're paying taxes. You're working, you're paying taxes. And if the taxes go to beautify a park or keep a street clean or pick up leaves in the fall in the neighborhoods, divert some of that money or or stop stealing some of that money and put it towards setting up the hand washing station and try to build a village. So the people can graduate from the village and move their way up to apartments. Like, the, those people are not just only standing in line to get hand out a soup kitchen, you know. Um, I, I think everybody, it's like when you, when you go to a different county and it says, like, I swear Washington County and Oregon said, park for tenants only, or residents in Washington County only. You're like, you're like. You're there, because I live, our house is 0.1 miles from there. So the gas, all the grocery shopping, all the stuff you do, a lot of my work was in that county, which is getting taxed. And your employers get taxed, get taxed. You get, so I'm a self-employed, I got to pay taxes. That includes transportation, and bus taxes, all that kind of stuff. Even someone was homeless and they were selling stuff at the Saturday market, they got to pay employee um, self-employment taxes is also going to pay for infrastructure. 
so they're not going to benefit by being in a neighborhood that's close to a park, that's close to a school, or kids have cool stuff. Oh, I'm so feeling bad. Let me get back to this movies. Light of my life was this person's one on the list. I don't know what the numbers mean. Anything as far as order. Two, leave no trace. I don't think I've seen any of those. Three, a quiet place. I don't think I saw that one. Looks That one's about monsters and horror. That looks horrifying. I swear I didn't see that one. I'm about to watch that because I'm trying to figure out how to meditate better. Someone said, if you're, this guy said, if you're not a fan of horror movies, I'd consider making an exception for this one. You'll be glad you did. Um, Will Smith in I Am Legend is, is number four, New York City. Uh, it's like Will and his, or the character played by Will and his, and a dog. Um, zombies. Um, The Road, I did watch this one. Um, it was, yeah, it's this boy and his dad. I watched this one about two, three weeks ago, or three weeks ago. Okay, so this one, this is why I didn't read the article well. Was, I'm so tired, guys. I'm about to fall asleep. Best movies to learn financial preparedness from. The Big Short. Okay. Was a book. Offers an best ex explanation about the cause of the Great Recession, such and such. I always think of Martin Short, I always think, and then I think of it as a comedy or something, and I, my mind just adapts, um, so this is what I just watched, though, number two for that one is The Boiler Room, um, so, That one is freaky. So, on the last line, he says, financial preparedness requires some skepticism and boiler room will teach you to develop it. So, I guess that's a warning. Um, here's something, someone's like, this reminds me of you and your kids. Number three, pursuit of happiness, so also with Will Smith um, and a child. This one, I went and bought years and years ago. Someone at my church said, this reminds me of you. And I'm like, oh, great, just sleeping on the ground with kids or in a bathroom. I didn't sleep on a bathroom, but you know what I'm saying? Sleeping on the bus, like, just the homelessness and trying to struggle and work hard. The difference is this guy but got really successful. So that's what my um, counselor yesterday, we were doing the EMDR, the one that's like this. We haven't done the eye movement yet. And it was that seeing yourself as successful. And I'll talk to you about the vision I had with that. Number four for financial and Ron, this Mars guy's in the room. I kept, oh shoot, there really is someone under me. I kept thinking of Enron this week and I was thinking of Omron for the, um, what did I have, an Omron um, pedometer. <laughs> they, I think they have the other, um, I keep thinking of my wrists, maybe they have um, wrist blood pressure cuffs or something, I don't know. But margin call. Uh, recent college graduates. So it says something about Margin Call examines the Darwinian nature of Wall Street without portraying a single character as likable. Like the four above listed proper movies, Margin Call makes it clear just how important financial preparedness is. And then he asks, do you have any preparedness movies? I don't see any, um, it's a lot of ads. I don't see any comments unless they email them directly. So again, um, I'll just read off the website. I, I don't know who this, this guy is. It's called Bunker Bob from May 23rd, 2020. Bunkerbasics.com slash top dash 10 dash preppers dash movies slash. And that is, I believe, a backslash both of those times. Um, let me think about the movie. It sounds like the main character, like, oh, I guess this is a slight spoiler. I don't want to spoil it. I'm just going to talk about what I felt, and then I'll go through the vision I had yesterday. The movie feels like 
the boy was clever, or the main character, so it's not really a boy. He was clever, and he's always trying to please his dad. But the stuff that he did to make money was a little bit shady um, by himself. So he's trying to see success in others. His buddies or friends are, are people he knows from school. And so he kind of gets in with the wrong crowd as far as having these guys come up to his house. Um, or some townhouse to do some... deal with it, whatever his operation was, that he end up shutting down and try to, again, keep trying to please his dad. And some stuff just got out of control. And at the end, they do recap his, like, what if, what if, what if, what if I hadn't, or what if I did, didn't, what if this didn't happen, or what if I hadn't have seen this? So he kind of ends up getting out of some trouble, but it was shady, and I'm not sure he knew it was shady at first. Um... There's Ponzi schemes. I'm thinking of real world. I'm thinking of, um, my dad had a fax machine back in the really olden days, and it was a small grayish, looks like it opened up, or probably opened up so you could put paper on it, and he had $50,000 written on the top, and he had a note, I forget what else he wrote, but it sounded like he got involved in some kind of scheme, or pyramid scheme, or scam. And he probably spent 50 grand on this get rich quick kind of thing. They're going to train you. You get a fax machine, you get this and that. And I believe whatever was written on that machine in the basement of our old house was something about a reminder that he got played, he got gypped, he got tricked. And um, it's really hard to put your money towards something and people just rake it in because they're going to be salespeople. They're going to rake it in um, and they're going to give you these big inflated, this could happen or we're on a roll here or we're keeping an eye on this. Oh, we're not going to let you down. And then everyone, even in the movie that um, I was just talking about, it's a call again, Boiler Room, similar to besides the family portion boiler room is a little bit similar to the pursuit of happiness except one is like legit and the other one isn't but it's that hustle of the wall street type um investment um for me it feels like um my posture is really bad right now for me it feels like Feels like I should have answered that call from that person. Um, feels like I'm super thirsty. I'll tell you that from so long. I accidentally turned it off before. Um, just trying to think. Well, this guy who wrote this article at, that I just um, summarized a little bit for you guys. He's definitely trying to tell you to keep your wits. I could do something like the cartoons. You blink your eyes and open them up and they're dollar signs. And you're like, cha -ching! Um, I used to be making a little bit of money on eBay without much effort. And then everybody and their brother started doing eBay. And especially last year, all of the stuff that I was doing just got out of control. It just shifts. Everybody, the grass is greener on the other side and everyone like floods that area. Um, before I talk about this vision thing, I wanted to talk about what happens when you're in a slow boil. You're the frog. So there's the frog goes in the water that's cold on the stove and it's slowly the temperature slowly rises and the frog will be like i'm getting a little warm i'm getting a little warm I'm, like, ah, I'm burning up here and you're like <coughs> or your frog b 
and the water's already ro rolling, boiling. And, which reminds me, did I even drink my tea? Oh my gosh, I already drank it all. And so it's like, I always talk about water and boiling, I'm like, so thirsty. Um, this guy ends up, or this frog ends up just boiling, jump, getting tossed into boiling while this guy is burning up. He touches the water, like, ah! and jumps out. So I feel like we're in a situation where we're both, but that we are more like this. The human nature, like how many people that I know figured stuff out, figured out how to get homes, which I haven't figured out how to do, figured out how to marry someone who's paying your bills for you and your kids, figured out this and that and this and how to get these decent paying jobs and the certain help that you need. But then they'll be like, what do you mean diet? Why should I worry about diet and food? Everything in the, they'll say everything in the grocery store is healthy for you. You're crazy. Like you're literally nuts. And you're like, all right. And you know, even the basics, they say shop around the perimeter of the store, which I don't necessarily do. But if you get to do whole foods, you're going to go. You know, fruits and vegetables, some bulk knots, and this. I will have bread here, and then they'll have like the meats and the delis, um, like the deli meats or the like the fish and all that stuff here. I don't know what would be on this side of the store, but for me personally, if I want raw nut butter, if I want nuts in a bag, if I want spring water or mineral water, I'm going to go in the middle aisles. If I want freeze dried fruit, um. I'm going to go in the middle, but they're trying to say that the Whole Foods are on the outside of the store, perimeter, and the outside aisles, and then the inside has the chips and the crackers and the sweets and the just, you know, canned stuff, packaged stuff. It's so basically you would have to do more prep. I personally never only, I might have done it a couple times as a challenge. I thought I heard something. Oh, speaking of challenge. I keep saying I'm going to make, a, make those things. I was thinking of cutting these. Oh, what was I going to do? I was going to make little ornaments. It looks like you could cut, like, one, two, like, see this circle? Yeah, it's like, it's almost like a, one, two, three, five, six, seven. I wonder if you could cut in between the ornaments. One and like, I was like, it's gonna be a mess. I'm trying to figure out how to make ornaments, but I was thinking something else like cutting it and then folding it in on each other and wrapping it with like I had this silk string stuff, like wrapping it a couple times, like one time over there, one time over there, and then hanging it and then putting it on my. I only have two pieces of garland, one by the TV and one there, but it needs something circular. Um, it might not be worth it, but if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it now. And i got to figure out my work schedule and all this stuff. So, um, 11.45, so this person didn't contact me about meeting up, so probably, I'll probably set a timer, do something fun, do some work, get on track, take a shower, and get ready. Um, start cleaning out the kitchen and figuring out. Um, I also miss the free bread place, so... That's 11.45, so we're, we're supposed to go to the store, like, we don't have any produce, really, well, we do, but we had some issues, and, like, we were both super tired. I'm still angry about, um, being told I was going to work Friday after Thanksgiving, and then being assigned a Wednesday, which I wasn't really doing Wednesdays, because I have other appointments, so Wednesday, I missed that appointment. Traveled in the busiest day of the year of traffic. Thursday off and went back to work Friday, Saturday. Well, everyone else had four days off, so and it's not even like you get off work like everyone else at 3 or 3.30 or 2.30. You get off when the rush hour is starting at 6 or right it's like starting at like 4 or something, but when it's really like involved and because a lot of people already got off for Thanksgiving, they're going to be, or they maybe had a half day, they're going to be already on the road, already partly to the destination, and they're going to be out trying to enjoy it. So that you're going to have the commuter crowd mixed with the people going to the restaurants, the shopping, 
grocery shopping, um, last minute this, getting your clothing and your underwear from the store so that you can go out to the bars and parties, you know what I mean? Um, I don't really know that, but I just imagine people that actually get invited to stuff get to like touch up their outfits and makeup and jewelry and stuff. Sounds fun, actually. It doesn't really sound fun for me, but I could make it fun for me. So I'll close my eyes and tell you this so I can remember it. Um, I was doing that exercise and I had started at some trying to do use a success, uh, EMDR with some with with a counselor trying to do the success not successful, but trying to do the a stressful situation that was recent and use that as almost like a catalyst to try to learn how to deal with past stressful stuff. She's trying to go through a current one and then take that into a meditative state. And so there was a lot of chaos and uh, what came to mind and what feelings I had. So I, every time I would do that, we'd pause, take a breath, open my eyes, talk about what stood out. And so we did that one, two, three, maybe four times. And then when the time ran out, I ended up having where it was, um, me. Oh, before the time went out, I was thinking something stressful and my mind shifted to contacting this, this, um, health client that I'm working with. And I think I had two health clients. I was thinking about how to make, how to actually do the conversation, like actually pick up the phone, pick up the email, pick up whatever, contact the client, potential client, do the um, phone calls or Zoom calls or doxy call and really focus. You guys know I don't focus. You guys know that I'll talk too quiet, too loud, too fast, too slow, um, too much. Generally, that's the biggest problem. Um, overwhelm somebody. And then I move toward, and then I don't sell myself on the points of what it is because I'm super shy about selling myself. And I'll use words like, oh, if you decide to hire me or people who hire me or people that hire other people like me, instead of saying, oh, clients, when they hire me, they're going to get this service from me. And this is going to be the price period. You're in or you're out. Like, I don't need to go 30, 40 minutes talking about the history of where I did this and blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. I mean, talking about potential hospitals and stuff. Wait till they hire you. T talking about what the techniques you're going to do. Talk, making sure that they talk to their practitioner. If they try to uh, take a tea or someone, someone said something about this or someone said something about this dietary thing. Like that should come once they sign the paperwork and they hand you the money. That's the stuff you talk. So I, anyways, that's a different thing. I was doing that meditative thing and I thought about how it's gonna go across. So that did come to mind, and then we stopped. It was I was like, oh shoot, my mind jumped from the stressful event to getting back to normal and on pace with my life. So that's where PTSD. I, I'm seeing it almost looking from the outside, looking in more instead of being in the midst, which I was very in the midst until 2016 and when I my dad said he would never talk to me and then 2019 or yeah 2020 I mean when the house burned up and I was at a trying to connect with people about the situation opened up a huge Pandora's box and I reopened that um communicating again with my uncle my brother and my brother's girlfriend which not really communicating with her because she doesn't really talk to me but I'm just throwing that out there, which wasn't part of the thing, but the PTSD, looking from the outside in, and seeing that it was taking me two hours to calm down after some, like everything is falling down behind me, um, unsettling thing. The next thing with that, last part of the meditation was, I almost, it was almost like I was, you know, Navi on a N64 Zelda Ocarina of Time, so Navi kind of, like, what is it on Peter Pan, Tinkerbell, a little fairy, it was almost like, I, I keep saying that I was like a fairy, but I was like a person sitting on a block of quartz, clear quartz, 
square. I had a square. It was more of a square, not a rectangle, but I I was imagining a rectangle. Um, oh, I think she's too busy today. Oh. I thought she said today might not work, so today might work. We'll see what she says in two hours. Hopefully I'll be in, that sho in and out of the shower by then. Um, there was... It was scary like that movie and that book. The, um, it's not called The Cabin. The Shack. I can't remember. I don't even think I watched the movie. Unless... I read the book. It's pretty vivid and scary. Especially when you already booked a camping trip with your kids in Oregon. In the gorge. You read that book, and then you'll know what I'm talking about. As a, a single person with two kids camping in the middle of nowhere. In the, in the Columbia Gorge. Anyways, different stories. It was like that, though. There was a forest, like, around the side. I was sitting on this quartz. Because my mind imagines a rock like this big, not like a rock the size of a couch or a ledge. And then there was a lake here, and it was super peaceful. There was no billboards. I didn't see any houses. There was no telephone poles, no power poles, no no airplanes, no, no cold, no hot. Even sitting on that quartz wasn't cold. Everything, I wasn't hungry. I didn't feel fat, I didn't feel black, I didn't feel like double standard because I was a woman or a single parent. Um, I just felt like if you ever had not nitrous oxide, so someone just had it for a tooth pull. I got the first time I got it was at the dentist too, but um, there's a point sometimes with nitrous where for me, I feel like a complete zen space. Almost that. It almost made me feel, this isn't anything to do with yesterday's meditation, but it almost felt like that split second where you become still in your mother's womb and your body has been delivered, that split second of life has begun for you. You're already alive, but and you're in the cosmos and you're in this miraculous place inside, but you're within a world of your own that person's in a world, that person's in a planet, that person's in a solar system, that person's in a universe, or that entity is in a universe, like, it's that split second of just peace, and like, bang, like, life, and like people maybe on heroin, you got that bliss, and then you come down off it, and then it's the real world, and then you're maybe chasing that, that so-called high, or that, 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 just serenity, perfect balance of, like, yin and yang, like, heat, cold, wind, no wind, like, thirst, no thirst, everything is just evened out, so it was like that in that vision, but it triggered my mind to say, you haven't rested, you haven't rested, you haven't rested, you haven't rested, <laughs> like, you have not taken time and from going to school to more school to so from going to school living with my parents to going to school to being homeless to being in a house to being pregnant to having kids to having kids to ha having a doors to having my kids still um my kids turn 18 and a boyfriend and a boyfriend and kids and boyfriend and work and work and work and work and you'll you'll see I need a whole file folder just for my taxes, just for each W-2 and each job and each time sheet. It's ridiculous. So, I didn't think about that, like, boom, like that zen space. I thought, thought about that zen space, but I had to word it kind of like that nitrous thing. Um, but it was a reminder, like, tap on the shoulder, like, hey, you didn't take a break. Everybody took a break after medical school. They said that was one of the hardest programs in there anything they did in their whole life. Um, I did that as a single parent with no support from anybody. Occasional rides for my kids, so I can't say never. Um, but 
you people have babies, everyone's fighting to babysit their baby in the hallway, you know, help them bring meals. It's like, yeah, they got their mom, their dad, their husband, they got people flying all over the country, and they someone gets a cold, the whole family flies out here, and cooks and cleans. I've seen it even, cooks and cleans. I was in a car accident, I can't walk. Sounds like it wasn't that bad. Car was told, well, doesn't sound too bad, does it? I'm a single parent, can't go to the store. Too bad, can't work. Crazy, crazy, crazy. I am. Um, I'm kicking myself for not being able to take a break. I had to work on Sunday, or sorry, Saturday. It's the same day I graduated. I finished one of my student jobs, which I had to by midnight that night. Finished a task as a writer and editor for these books that we're not even going to get our names. I don't think they're even going to put our names of who helped edit and write those books. Unfortunately, the person whose project it was is going to have the name. Whatever. Um, <laughs> I think I bought a copy just to... Not even one. I think one was already published before I... Obviously, I can't just write it and have it published the next day. But I, don't, I think I bought a copy of one of the volumes. Um just so I can remember what it was, I guess, so I could put it on my resume. I probably should do that more. Anyways, it's a different story. I graduated at um, somewhere in Portland, the Coliseum or something like that, and I went home and worked. And then I had gotten a job because my dad reneged on the money he was going to fund for my midwifery um, licensure, and the, um, so I could study for the boards, which would be about two months after you graduate. and in August, and my dad was going to pay for the midwifery class, so I was going to go back to school in August, take the take the boards in August, go back to school in September, I meant, and then he was going to pay for the startup cost for my clinic, so you hope you get your license and your, pass your boards for Oregon, you had to take, you should take three tests, or two, you take like four tests, I think, you take like two board exams, two national board exams, and two, did you take two or three, why do I feel like there was three? There's two, at least two that day. You already passed one, and then I actually took the midwifery one. That's, that's not, that's, anyways. You take multiple board exams and specific for state exams, and you need to pass all that to get your license. So it's a lot of studying, a lot of work. It is like torture. If you want to be, if you want to know self-torture, you can talk to me about what path. A lot of people have it. It's not as torturous when you're not a single mom, <laughs> um, but you go out and end up having some renege on the finances, which your business coach or your business teachers tell you fall term, winter term of your first year that you need money. Um, so I had to make a decision to do the midwifery or pay for a couple of months at a clinic space and because I already signed up for the midwifery program and it was working, which it wasn't working, I said, take this opportunity because I didn't, you can't get your license if you can't shadow under someone and do births. And I found I got into a good space with some interviews and stuff to be able to go to births. And I took seize of that opportunity to end up that car accident right at the end of that board exam, waiting for the test results. I got in a car accident with a midwife, natural path midwife, and the car got totaled. Out. I kept doing the births. She said, no, you can come back to it. I said, I don't. it was so hard to get that position. It took me years to get that position. I kid you not. Um, there was a lot of picky and judge, judgmental and they had announced in front of the whole class that they're looking for a student. They're going to do interviews, bring me your email address during the break. I ran straight up there right at the break and she said, sorry, it's closed. I was the first one that, sorry, it's closed. It was like three minutes ago, you just announced that, like, they look you in the eye, these racist women, sorry, it's closed. And think how many black people were in natural public medical school when I was in school. Come on now, come on. It was so bad. I'll put that on the trauma timeline. Um, I would love to... Um, so besides taking a break, that's nobody's fault but mine, except I went to work a new job, $15 an hour, Tuesday after graduation. So, I 
had my relatives there until Tuesday morning. I, I don't even think I could tell them bye because I'm like, I got to be there at like 745 for my orientation. Bring in your um, social security card, you know, get get your paperwork signed with HR. And have, I think there was a, I think it was all day because it was um, multiple people had got hired for different positions. So, oh my God. The Tuesday... And I wasn't even supposed to be working like that because we had the board exams. You're supposed to be studying. They said, in order to pass this board exam, you have to treat it like a full-time job. And you have to be organized and you have to set a schedule. Not only that, you have to eat healthy. you got to sit in a quiet spot. you got to have your stuff, your materials, your study books, your paper, your computer. Um, just literally like eight hours a day with a couple breaks, like you're at a job, a lunch break and a couple bathroom breaks. Serious, seriously crazy. So imagine doing that. They told me I had a month at the job that they were allotted from the um, HR to train me up to 40 hours a week. They said after that, it's going to be on call. And I end up, I end up applying for a different position that was, I demoted myself by doing instead of on call a 20 hour a week job. I probably should have kept the on call, but I had this kids at home to feed. Um, this is all a tangent, but I didn't take a break. Could you imagine that? Let's try to study 40 hours a week and take advantage of the 40 hour a week at the job. So after a month, you're going back down to like five or 10 hours a week. Um, if that, and still some training. And it was so bad because you want the money for your kids because you thought that you wanted to follow the business features plan that you have your house, your bills, and your clinic space, and all your licensing fees. Imagine that hundreds and hundreds of dollars, your malpractice insurance and fees. You got to sign up for your insurance stuff after you get a business address, your license, and your everything. You know, apply for your, if you didn't already apply for your business entity with a government, with a IRS, the EIN number, all that stuff. This has to come in together. Like my friend, she was in school before me and she just set that stuff up, I swore, last year. But if you work under someone else as an independent contractor under your own name, you don't have to worry. Um, I'm not saying you don't have to worry, but you don't, you're not just kind of trying to work under the table or something. I even got a tax bill like that first year. I had zero patients. I had a bunch of patients for midwifery that weren't mine. I didn't get a penny. I got a tax bill for what thirty thousand dollars or something because they say they see a doctor's office and they think you're making hundreds of thousands or million dollars a year. I got this huge tax bill and I was, it was a projector like you didn't file your taxes. I like, didn't file taxes. I didn't make a penny. If someone would have donated a penny, heck, you can't really file taxes on a penny that somebody gives you. But I was like, if I had done something free and somebody says I'm gonna sliding scale you a dollar I would have freaking done my taxes and I would have been I would have been like I didn't even get a penny like nobody even gave me a can to go to go cash in at the grocery store for five or ten cents like oh my God. it was horrible guys and so the end of yesterday's this thing was to see myself as successful for some reason she saw this I might have mentioned that if I took a real break and I got myself together that I would be able to generate a different energy instead of all this nervous chaotic energy to my client base or to potential patients and even to other people in the community that I work with or speak to you on a regular basis or don't speak to you the first time you know they told you pass out a business card only to people that you think it's really gonna hire you I passed out hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of business cards not one of those people called me not one of them the only person that called me was for notary work and every time they called they canceled they said, oh, I don't need you anymore and they called and then they you know, so I spent all this time on the phone listening to all these issues they have and trying to figure out if they got the right documents and it's like okay you ready so, <laughs> trying to put together witnesses for them and trying to make arrangements tell them when my schedule is clear and then they just that's the only, I, there's one person I don't even know she kept losing my stuff. That's the only person I know, and that's just recently. Um, which you gotta start somewhere. Something told me was it twenty because of all this chaos with having to work and having all this anxiety and exhaustion 
even having kids and being in a stable household, even staying at home is hard, taking care of babies that are 18 months apart. But having that on your own, being flat broke and overpriced rental, there's something about your exhaustion and anxiety that people don't like your energy or you feed if they're nervous people and you start acting nervous around them like acting like them they don't like it they don't see they don't see in the mirror that happened to me too you're so empathetic and if you're tired like hungry angry lonely tired you seem to be more extreme um so it's i wanted to learn more there's different things that I swear there's certain entitled, privileged people that say, you're doing it wrong, you're doing it wrong. So how are you going to tell me that I'm doing something wrong, what that involves a relationship with my higher power? I was like, I'm not in the strict religion, and I try to join some kind of non-religious, so-called religious places. I feel like even if you're in a strict place, if I wanted to get on my knees, if I wanted to stand on my head and talk to a Christian God and... Sanskrit, Sanskrit, they might kick me out of a facility because they're like, we don't stand on our head and we don't speak that language and we don't want to associate yoga or like my old church yoga or Chinese medicine with Christianity. They think that's the devil. That like, if I mean, people want to just kick you out, but they don't know your belief. If your beliefs line up, I feel like your expression and symbolism. It's not necessarily symbolism, but it's your way of, like this tapping. How do you start that tapping exercise? It could be a way to do something that involves not taking meds or not getting drunk or high. Um, it can involve not going into a facility. But something told me early on that once you clean and organize your house, you're going to be getting patients like crazy because it's going to make your person, yourself, more calm. This was at least six years ago, five, at least five years ago, and I still haven't done it. I had this similar voice tell me, clean out your closet. I don't know which closet it was. And you will have, your next place will have a garage. I like halfway cleaned the closet and never forgot about that little epiphany. We got a parking spot. Which is more than we had before. <laughs> we got a side fucking spot. I said, that's what happens when you half butt something. And it's not, it's not that I didn't need help or that I didn't, I was unmotivated. You guys see my channel, there's a bazillion videos that mostly don't have any views because it's me chattering too much. It all ends up when I watched my great challenge the first time I said clean the house fast and it got to I watched her talk and clean and I had to use the video talk hear my own voice hear my vibration of my voice and my heart center I think I, I was missing that from a child my parents hated me and my mom hated me I think I'm missing that comfort of a mother's voice while my body was developing so I think that's why I like to hear myself talk. It's not selfish. I believe it's a, something you seek. If you never got a hug or you never got told a good girl, a good boy, sometimes you seek something that should be a part of a normal childhood development. Um, some people say don't praise your kids. There's some religions that say don't praise your kids. You're going to cause problems. But someone should know they appreciate it and that good job. And if they fail a softball game or they fail a test they need to say their parents in my opinion just say they have unconditional love for this person uh, so a lot of people commit suicide they cannot ever do well enough and i could never do well enough in my family that's a different story uh, everyone has tried to tell me how i'm doing stuff wrong i said you want to you want to talk about someone's doing something wrong i'm not trying to judge anybody but you're sitting here pointing the finger at me and you're completely hypocritical because you're not even dealing with what you're telling me to do with your own life you're not somebody that's sitting up on a mat and meditating and being this Zen person and having balance. And I mean, is it, does that sound selfish too? Like, if I were to join a monastery, 
monastery and I had everything donated to me, I didn't have to really work. I just worked the grounds and cleaned the moss. I almost tried to join something like that. So, like, they got a bowl and then someone, eat, they go around town and people put rice and crap in there. And then you, like, what is it, the Dalai Lama? You meditate and sleep, sleep 12 hours a day and meditate eight and the rest you're cleaning and eating and walking up and down the street getting, getting food. And I guess you can have, I guess they have public um, meditate or if they're in the house. I was thinking of doing something like that, the Buddhism or the Catholic No, and I was like, I'm gonna, I don't have any, um, to be born again virgin. I had two kids so a long time ago, I was like, I'm gonna go and be a nun. And then, like, live it. But I didn't like the rest of the part of the church, but I was like, I needed somewhere where I could have housing, because this put me out in the street, and that I could be like, what's that movie with Whoopi Goldberg, you know? Sister Act, good grief. But, like, I don't want to judge somebody, but someone's going to call me out on something that they don't like when it has nothing to do with them and their relationship with what, what I'm doing with my life, with my business. Nothing's illegal. Nothing's wrong. I'm not in a strict religion. But people want to try to say that they know what's going on. And they might have good intentions, so don't get me wrong there. But they're going to want to say what they think is wrong and why it's wrong. And then I will immediately start to think that I'm wrong all the time. And that I don't need these people. And I'm going to go away by myself. And maybe that want to go away by myself is another inner cry. Like that vision. To go and get some kind of RV if I rent it. And go on a road trip or something by myself. And I will... Everyone will say, oh, the heart grows fond, or absence makes the heart grow fond. Be absent from thy family, uh, and being able to reflect. There's people on YouTube that are going out on their vans, and you never know. You know some of this could be staged, you know. They could be out on their van, and this van living in Walmart parking lot. And they could film themselves in Walmart, and this and that. Here's how I make my meal. And they can go back to a 30-room mansion, for all we know. Editing like a state of the art computer, you never know, you never know. But I, just, I like to try to think that that's not what's going on. But it's, it doesn't sound like that's easy. Having this platform sounds like a good way to really connect with others. Unfortunately, there's a lot of bullies, but connect and email, um, meet up with people. You're at a certain event and other people are there. Sometimes people are the opposite. They hide from these people. They don't post the video until after they leave. They don't want people stalking them. Like, oh, it's such and such and such video. You know, 44,000 views in an hour. How many other people are going to try to find them? But, um, somebody tell me what I was going to say. Take that break. If you were supposed to take a break after um, medical school, so 17 years of college, and then after medical school ended in 2014, I went and finished my midwifery classes in 2015, I believe. And I finished the births in 2016. And then I did two years of volunteering at the hospital because I couldn't get a job. And then I got a job. Or I got a job and then I, no, I couldn't get a job. And then I got a part-time job that was never on Wednesdays. So I volunteered Wednesday at 9 to 1, I think. Yeah, every Wednesday. Um, they give you five or six hours of parking pass. I think five hours. You had a lot to do. So um, not a penny I got for that direct patient care. Could you imagine being direct patient care and being a licensed doctor and not getting a penny? And out of desperation of not going insane inside your house, so I need to put that on my resume, too. So all that stuff is just what I wanted to say. Like, I haven't done stuff. I don't have to say, oh, because such and such did this, I have to do it. But to see these people on Facebook, if they're traveling up and down that coastal trail or on the Pacific coast, people traveling to their parents and grandparents, uh, family, land, compounds where they could sit and study and have our, their room and be on a lake and have, see their old friends and their nieces and nephews like it just sounds so peaceful and like they have a loving supportive family 
and then they just fly out to their old city or to a different city and take their board exam like with everybody else um, pass their boards and a lot of people travel to Haiti and Nepal and they did some medical work at clinics there for years and or for started nonprofits and stuff amazing stuff um, I think a lot of it they could have help from the family other loved ones so I have to be grateful for what I'm doing right now um, I have to be grateful for what I have I have to continue to trust in the process of getting help from others I make these videos because I do not necessarily see some people with it extremes and the chaotic mind like I have and I don't want people to feel alone um, people don't understand me and I understand why they don't understand me um, my kids do but this because they were born into it um, when you see certain YouTube channels say someone's talking about a narcissistic partner someone's talking about mar narcissistic parent somebody's talking about, about preppy somebody's talking about medical conditions somebody's talking about home study someone's talking about off-grading a lot of their focus for their channel is that one thing that one word um, my great challenge will have stuff about household job dealing with the family dealing with the pets sick pets dying pets the yard work garden like she had makeup on there for a while um, quilting and band stuff so she had my great challenge had more of that busy busy mom she had days off she got holiday pay she got vacation hours summer vacations trips to Europe trips up and down the coast trips to great grandma's house and all like all these different things that I don't have that level of prestige at any job to earn where at least I know I'm not just taking off and getting a big zero on my paycheck, which hurts to see your paycheck at zero. Um, like, when you give so much of yourself and it's so low pay anyways, but it is, that's why, for me, I have to stay self-employed even if I'm hustling for pennies, literally on pennies for selling a pair of, can't sell socks, I don't think, so, a pair of pants, yoga pants that I'm too fat to wear. It's sad. Um. But that was one of the channels that was a little bit more rounded because she had different topics and different situations as a working female. But she also had a four-story house, a husband, a VA loan to help get the house, and kids in these excellent schools, and just like certain privilege and class that I'm not in despite doing 17 years of education to be a doctor and a doctor midwife. I just don't get it so I don't want other people I feel discouraged about my own life at 45 years old I feel like I am have given my all I used to be super optimistic super hopeful super super glad to be able to help as many people as I could and then as the years went down especially with the racism at medical school and the racism with even black patients would say I don't want a black doctor doctors are supposed to be white just a decline people not taking me seriously I ask a patient all you have to do is check an email I need a one or two a year, check an email, click on this diagnostic, click on this, I'm going to upload an article on such and such condition or such and such dietary thing or health at age 12 for your 12 year old. Click on that, send me a test email, I'll send one back and that's going to help me qualify for this, this Insano grant. Nobody will do it. Oh, when, next time you fill out your paperwork for your insurance, put such and such insurance, you'll still get everything covered from all your other facilities, but now it'll cover me because I've been working for free for you for six or seven years. Get on the phone. I don't care. Stay on hold. I'll help you. I'll be on three-way calling. Tell them that you want to switch your insurance to the to type of Medicaid that'll pay a natural bath. They won't do it. So now I've, before I had that session yesterday, I have reconstructed. I got laid off and they said because of restructuring. So I'm reconstructing my life and my value. And I had this attitude that, oh, maybe I'm going to do medicine on myself. Maybe I'm going to do these natural qualities. I did it with the car accident with trying to prevent cancer. I had um, I had tumors in my breast. I had um, part of my cervix removed because of precancerous cells. But I didn't just go to med school or follow the certain diets and stuff to 
make myself healthy or even like try to raise my kids and my loved ones healthy. I did it so I could have a career so I could go to work every day and be a pillar like as far as loving the community enough to forgive them of their racist behaviors and their stereotypes and judgment and overcharging me for stuff that everyone else got charged a thousand percent less all the stuff that happens in society forgive them love them unconditionally and share this knowledge and help them get through stuff and help with the counseling and help with the childbirthing and help with everything from a through z and background again and it's, it hasn't been working as you know from my struggles um i feel like i want to rewind i will say let go let god just shave everything off get rid of every extra career put in some kind of break normal people you're gonna go six seven eight years without having a christmas break or a spring break or a weekend vacation like even that camping trip I haven't gone on. If it wasn't for my boyfriend, I wouldn't have gone to a concert. I wouldn't have gone to the beach. I wouldn't have gone camping for, what did we do, two days? Two nights? I ended up sleeping like that after that first night. I ended up sleeping all day. Or the, the night we were supposed, the day we were supposed to leave, I think. I slept in and I missed having a camp. I, don't, I was super tired. I apologize. I'm like, I've been running raggedy. Ain't nobody babysat my kids when they were little. Not one person. Could you imagine? People ask for Christmas for Saturday nights. So they can go out with their partner for date night and stuff. And they usually get it. <laughs> even if it's grandma or even if it's the older kids watching it, a neighbor or somebody. But could you imagine going your whole kids 18 years and not having a sitter? Not having time for yourself. Maybe, maybe they went outside and you asked the neighbor to watch him for 20 minutes. I remember that 20 minutes. That was Effie, my neighbor. She ended up leaving my kid with some weird teenager that was doing some weird, inappropriate stuff that I had heard about. I'm not going to say anything else. Sorry that I used that person's name. They're just doing some weird stuff. Let's just say I wasn't there. But I don't want to take a chance. Since I don't know, I don't want to incriminate anybody because I wasn't there. So don't take it like that. But there was some this weird, weird stuff that was going on. And I didn't want my kid alone with that child. They could have been fine. But when you take, I hate sending my kids to a babysitter. Sometimes I did it because I had a test or something that we had to do. And the daycare centers were closed. I did a couple times. But that was because there was work or school. I had a lot of times the babysitter left. Same thing happened to me. My mom hired babysitters. They left my kids alone. Sucks. But I gotta go because I wanna enjoy my day and I'm on a tangent. Probably the high noon. Yeah, it's 1224 because I could see the sun. I feel a little bit of energy. It'll be about three hours. Maybe three and a half hours. The sun will be starting to set. So I'll probably go out. Um, if anything, just a walk around the block once if anything um, probably should go to the post office but before the sun sets um, let's let's end in hope and gratitude um, I'm hopeful that I can get the help that I need the counselor yesterday I'm gonna I'm gonna thank her so much she's like yeah I believe that this problem with the way that you were hurt as a child from your family and she doesn't really talk a lot about sexual assault and all that she said that is making it so it's hard for you to function now and that's what I'm trying to tell people and the other counselors the completely opposite the reason you're having so many struggles with your brain is because you're not in a good enough job now I said I kept saying no you don't understand I'm not in a good job now because that past is causing me to be a person that people don't want to be around. Somebody hurt me. Many people hurt me to the extent where it's causing me to be not good. And I'm not a criminal and I'm not going around bullying other people. But my energy is off. And I was searching for EMDR for many years and learning more about it's going to help heal and rewire your brain in a way. 
so this ang anxious uh, sympathetic nervous system person that I am always tired always exhausted always hyper at the same time it's it's got to it's it's who I am but it's it's not fitting in with society and it's making me really poor if you know what I mean um, so I'm having hope that I finally had somebody who's recognizing the obvious elephants in the room. There's elephants, pink elephants, green elephants, purple elephants, sparkly elephants, flying elephants. They're, like, they're all over the place. And people don't see, like, what's in front of them. Um, and then the gratitude that I made it far enough to be able to make changes and just to be grateful that I'm able to walk and see. I mean, I know a lot of people can't walk anymore and they can't see. They were born able to do this. I have teeth, most of them. You see this discoloration as I was, I had a surgery and some stuff there many years, many, many years ago. Um, despite me gaining an obscene amount of weight um, doing this project, something told me to finish this yesterday. Oh, the air is warm. Peace, guys. My day off. I feel really guilty taking a day off, and I'm not taking a day off because I, I showed you that stack of papers. There's about 20 pieces of paper there, and that's not even all I had to fill out. Um, 